is is so oh they yelled at me blah 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 they you know they don't you you've got to take and know how to you've got to know how to take direction and them yelling is one of the ways they take and kind of beat you in, you know get you into that what is up everybody welcome back to the eclectic beard where variety is the spice of life and hopefully you can find some of that spice here i'm gonna say it now i'm former coast guard i served from may of 2002 to february of 2004 um i'll take it to a whole nother video on my time in the coast guard this right here what it takes to survive coast guard boot camp now I, i'm watching this because i want to see how things have changed and I'll probably take and throw in a story or three from my time in boot camp. So here we go. How old is the guy in with the Really? He looks he looks younger than the fella he's screaming at. Oh my god. This is Coast Guard <laughs> Boot Camp. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They get M6. We had to do with M1 Grand, uh, the, the M1s. We we didn't have the M16. We had the old wooden 100 pound fucking guns. We had to stick out there or hold like that in front of us. Don't drop it, recruit. Don't drop it. We had to do that shit. These fel these people, these these recruits are getting to hold of the M16, which isn't quite as heavy. Before they get to serve in the United States Coast Guard, all recruits have to graduate from the Coast Guard's eight-week basic training program. Get out of that! Oh my God! Get away from me! Oh my God! I have yet to see any of these drill instructors taken actually, or yeah, the drill instructors taken, yell at these guys and then make them go drop and get drop and uh, get in the push-up position. Push-up position. Take there you go. Not easy. There's a reason the program is designed the way it is. We have people from all walks of life that come here. It is a small portion of the youth of this nation that are at least attempting to raise their hand and do something bigger than themselves. Basic training happens here at United States Coast Guard Training Center, Cape May, located at the southernmost point of New Jersey. Before they get to Cape May, all incoming recruits report to the USO lounge at the Philadelphia airport. It's okay. So yeah, they they land in Philadelphia. I'm gonna tell you, uh, being from the South and originally from Alabama, living in South Carolina, having lived in Georgia for a time, joined the Coast Guard. They flew us out of. I flew out of Fort uh, Jackson up there in Columbia. They flew us from Fort Jackson to. Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina, we took and got off one of the commercial jets and got on a, how do you put it? Yeah, a little prop plane with two engines. And we flew from there, and I guess because it was so small or the layover had been so long, by the time we reached Philadelphia, it was too late to actually go to the USO. Uh, the people in Cape May did not care for that whatsoever. Uh, but we had a chance to actually sit down at a Chili's restaurant. It's my first time going into a restaurant, and they'd be like, so, what would you like to drink? Sweet tea. And they bring back unsweet tea, and I'm like, I t this isn't sweet. No, you've got to add sugar to it. That's defeating the purpose. You can't add sugar to dissolve in tea if it's not warm. It, that's not how this works. But yeah, I never did the whole USO thing. We actually went from the, from there to... Uh, hotel that night we stayed the night in a hotel there's is me and three other fellows uh two to a room um we took and stayed in a hotel and then we had the liberty van i, I guess you could call it a liberty van uh basically they picked up recruits with it picked it up and it was a van took us on about an hour and a half ride to cape may it's where they spend their final moments before beginning their journeys as Coast Guardsmen. 
Why am I doing this? I don't know, it sounded like a good opportunity. My grandfather was in the Coast Guard. My mom's whole side of the family was in the Navy, but I didn't really feel like the Navy was my calling and the Coast Guard felt right. I don't have a ton of money, man. I don't and I know everybody, seen it, everybody from other branches that might take and see this will look and go, wait, they don't look like they're over six foot tall. No, they've got to be really good swimmers, though, I tell you. And look, don't be mad at the coast at the coasties out there just because every time it rains and the water gets over the ankles, they get sea pay. I'm just saying. I don't come from money, so I didn't really, I uh, couldn't really afford school. So this kind of seemed like my only option to do this without uh, accruing a, a large amount of debt. So I'm most nervous about, um, honestly, just the yelling. Something you just don't get used to as a day-to-day -day life as a civilian. So. This is the last non-stressful meeting you're going to have for the next several weeks. It's a learning experience. Their teaching methods are just a tad different than what you're used to. They're going to walk yeah, into a world you. that's very different for them. It's going to be very intense so that when they go out into the fleet, stations and cutters, that they're ready to help and ready to perform. And see, that's very, you know, everybody these days is, is so... Oh, they yelled at me, blah, blah, blah. They, you know, they don't, you, you've got to take and know how to, you've got to know how to take direction. And them yelling is one of the ways they take and kind of beat you, in, you know, get you into that. It's funny because before I joined the Coast Guard here in South Carolina, I went down to Beaufort to the Marine Corps Training Center, Paris Island, because I was like, yeah, I'm going to take and join the Marine Corps. I seen this little five foot four son of, son of a gun taking and screaming into the face of this six foot three recruit and the recruit looked terrified and i said yeah no thank you uh because if they're gonna take and break you down like that you might come out a little hoo -hoo, crazy which i mean you have to have a certain amount of craziness to be a marine to begin with taking a charge and into the front line first anyways um i've got nothing but respect for marines though because they're some of the nicest and uh loyal people you'll ever meet but yeah i just i'm crazy i just didn't have that level of i say that i was a little bitch i just didn't want to take and get screamed at by somebody you know four inches shorter than me take and make me you know look like a little bitch didn't really help a whole lot that I, uh, once i joined this though the incoming recruits enjoy what little downtime they have left before they line up and head to the bus that will drive them to Cape May. The Coast Guard, tough eight weeks ahead of you. What's the motto of the Coast Guard? Semper Paratus. I can't hear you! Semper Paratus! All right. The motto of the Coast Guard always is Semper Paratus. It means always ready. These new recruits have about two hours to get ready for what happens the second their bus ride is over. Obviously, there's a shock and awe factor to it. Kind of everything goes haywire for a little bit. While we do need to instill that little bit of fear and sense of urgency in them that evening, the main goal is get them in the building and get them processed and get the paperwork where it needs to go and get them. And seeing as I took and missed being, uh, our flight was late and we had to take and stay. We took and missed that whole round. So we got processed in, but we got processed in about 12 hours later than the others. So we didn't take and exactly get that route of a welcoming, but it still wasn't very pleasant. While we do need to instill that little bit of fear and sense of urgency in them that evening. You're sure to yes, sir. The main goal is get them in the building and get them processed and get the paperwork where it needs to go and get them in the rack. Do it now. Aye, aye. aye, aye sir. The first incarnation of the Coast Guard was born in 1790. Hamilton. Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton lobbied Congress to construct a fleet of 10 large ships, or cutters, intended to enforce tariffs on vessels entering U.S. ports. In 1915, the U.S. Revenue Cutter Service merged with the U.S. Life Saving Service to form what we know today as the United States Coast Guard. Since then, 
the Coast Guard has been involved in every major United States military conflict. Today, the Coast Guard has more than 40,000 men and women on active duty, and over 30,000 more are serving in reserve and auxiliary capacities. And it all begins here. On a cold week in November, we spent... Okay, thanks for the history lesson, but could you move this along a little bit? Let's take and see more about boot camp. I'd like to see how it's changed. I mean, it's been... Jesus Christ. Whew. Almost 20 years since I was in, so... spent four days at Training Center Cape May, allowing us to observe different companies at various stages of the eight-week boot camp. Boot camp itself, it, it is whatever you make it. You do what you're told, yes sir, no sir, aye aye sir, and it's as simple as that. First, the new recruits are issued uniforms. Next in line. Come on this way. And after a medical exam and standard vaccinations, the male recruits get a free haircut. It was the worst haircut in the history of haircuts. Like, for real. Then, it's time for the initial physical fitness assessment. Where the recruits have to do as many push-ups... These wusses are doing it all inside. We had to take and do it outside on the track. Of course, it is November. I mean, so it could be a little bit cold, but still. Uh, yeah. It, you're going to take and be outside in the elements anyways once you take and get out to the fleet. Just saying. Do it outside. And sit-ups as they can in one minute. Finally, there's a one and a half mile run. Male recruits have 14 minutes to finish the run. Female recruits have 17 minutes. Not every recruit passes on their first try, but they do get another chance. You have five minutes to finish this test. Most of you should finish in less than three minutes. All Coast Guard recruits have to pass a three-part swimming test. Go ahead, step the edge. First, jumping into the pool from a six-foot platform. Step off. See, that's different. We didn't have to take and jump into the pool from a six-foot platform. So that, that has changed, but that, I actually think that's probably a better better thing to take and gauge on. You'd be surprised how many people join the Coast Guard that do not know how to swim. So the whole time they're in there, up to about two weeks before you take and process out to your unit or to your, you know, your cutter or whatever, they're in remedial swim classes. Then, a 100 meter swim. And last, they have to tread water for five minutes. Coast Guard recruits don't have to be expert swimmers. Remedial swimmers are allowed to wear flotation devices. After all of this physical exertion, the recruits have undoubtedly worked up an appetite, which means it's time for lunch. Or as it's known at Cape May, chow. But chow isn't a time for relaxation or chatting with your fellow recruits. Take it, put it, put it where it needs to go for the, uh, for, so it can get cleaned, scrape off whatever food in the trash beforehand, and then go outside and wait in formation. What is it? Fast engine! In fact, it's the complete opposite. I oh. Let's go. Move your feet. How about you move a little faster, man? No, nope, no. Nope. Get out. That's not where you sit. That's not where you sit. You have someone right there telling you where to go. This should be one of the most relaxing times they have, you would think, uh, but that is when <laughs> all eyes are on. You're not special, and you didn't shave last night like we told you. A razor never touched your face. As soon as you get back from medical, I am taking you in there and ensuring that you shave. You probably think that you get a little break from the company commanders, but when you go to your seats, the uh, company commanders are staring you down and they're asking you questions. Tell me about a class Bravo fire. Who was Alex Haley? Tell me about Commodore Berta. Before they can eat, recruits are randomly stopped by company commanders and tested on required coast. Yeah, you get that the, the books and stuff like that. You better for daggone sure make sure that you actually 
know you know you're studying yourself because they will stop you and they will test you and you, you're not gonna like the outcome because they'll keep you know rapid fire questions until you get you know get enough of them right in their eyes and they let you finally go down and sit which you've already wasted the minutes that you needed to take and sit now what i don't see is peanut butter table now whenever i was in we would eat and we clean our plates real quick and the last minute or you know last two or three minutes that we might have for chow time a couple of us would i i know i'd do it i'd take and go make about two peanut butter jelly sandwiches scarf those down real quick wash it down with uh some water and go outside and get in formation you might be like wow that's a whole lot of food well it might have been but um i was a little bit more athletically inclined at that point in time and my metabolism was way higher than what it is now so uh yeah i would uh i would eat it and i went into Coast Guard weighing 135. When I got out of boot camp, I weighed 157. So I put on, you know, I put on some muscle in there. But I, I don't see that table in there anymore. So maybe they did away with it. Guard knowledge. Go away, Davis. Oh, never mind. There it is. See it right there. I see the two pumps. Peanut butter, jelly. Recruits who answer correctly are allowed to pass and eat their meals. Carry on. Tell me about Douglas Monroe. It's not on the deck. Start writing. Aye, aye, buddy, that's a great one. Start writing. Start writing. Start writing. Those who fail to answer correctly are ordered to document their mistakes on a performance tracker, which is collected and reviewed every day by their company commanders. Yeah, that's also new. We didn't have to take and do that. It's just rapid fire answer to questions. You know, if you get the first one wrong, you make sure you take and get the next three or four right, so that way you can actually go sit down and you can finish your chow. That way you're not standing there answering questions the whole damn time and losing out on your chow time. It just goes to show you that there is no downtime in basic training. What the freak are you? It's a sense of urgency in everything we do. And sign the company out of the gallery. And it really, all at the end of the day, is there to assist the recruits and keep them sharp. Carry on. Now I know I'm noticing that that's a second class petty officer right there. Whenever I was in, all of the drill instructors were they were at least first class and if not chiefs. So it's kind of odd. Oh, ah! You don't respond to carry on. boot camp goes on it doesn't get any easier outside the galley we're going outside to play some games because of some stuff that you did if an individual recruit makes a mistake in boot camp the entire company pays for it so this is what i don't understand i don't understand why we're in week 06 we still have gear drift in our damn squad base we still can't push in the hooks on our freaking racks our laundry hooks we're being lazy sierra aren't we Oh boy. What's also fun is when they come in after you've been out training and they find somebody made a mistake, as they inevitably will, and they toss the whole bay. I mean, you've got to take and find your mattress, and you got to take and find your covers, and even your laundry bag, and they'll have soap and all kinds of, and, and like shaving cream all over the mirrors and the bathrooms. Oh my lord, week six, you ain't getting it right? Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm glad you agree. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire! When recruits hear their company commander say fire, 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 it often means they're about to get smoked. Buy some real estate. The smoke sessions, if you will, are the physical exertion of energy to reinstill to them that what they were doing. I've seen somebody just there with a red belt on. Now, whenever I was in, if you had the red belt, you were part of a special company called the uh, Pep Squad. And uh, those were the screw ups who they were trying not to take and transition down a phase, but were trying to get them kind of caught up. You know, or, you know, they were just getting discipl disciplinary action for a week, or they might get the disciplinary action for a week or two before they actually did have to transition down. 
but you knew where they were at at all times or if they were close by because every time they marched and they had their hands out straight like this their left arm straight like this see like this and every time their left foot hit the pavement pep 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 so you heard them coming and you take and hear them out there at night time after everybody else would be down uh to to bed you'd hear them out there still marching around pep pep Yep. The smoke sessions, if you will, are the physical exertion of energy to reinstill to them that what they were doing was not the correct thing. Do it! Do it! Stop anticipating my command. Stop! We'll just keep playing this game until you get louder. Straight out in front of you. See that right there, the straight out with the squats, having to hold it up. You want to talk about a workout. I'll tell you what, take and go find something that's about four and a half pounds in weight. And then sit there and push it out, squat down, hold it for a second, pull it up, or stand up, pull it in, push it out, do this do the same routine and taking I'm telling you, you're up here, right here. And here as well as back here are all gonna take and get you might not take and get ripped but you'll take and get some definition from it I promise you I was walking through their squad bays their racks weren't made properly just oh my god week six and it looks like that. that they should know as week zero six recruits and so they got punished for it <laughs> yeah rightfully so getting smoked is it's rough it's hard to push through sometimes, but at the end of it, you're, you feel better because you, you made it. Well, see, here's the problem. Here's the problem. In week six, y'all are still making the mistake of you can't take and get your, your squad bay cleaned properly. Uh, by week six, it should be more classroom than physical stuff. You're still going to get PT in the mornings, after lunch, and before dinner time chow. However, if you if you company doesn't screw up that bad or one person doesn't screw up that bad it's not going to be that big of a deal because you know they start taking and doing individual people at least they did when i was in week six you can't get your squad bay looking right how many how many ribbons did y'all get that's all i'm gonna ask get through you feel like it makes you stronger get on the deck Oh, did we lose count? Do we need to start over? Just do one good push-up. Usually in this week of training, we don't really discipline them as much, but we still have to uphold standards. And if they're not meeting those standards, then that's when we use these tools. I, I see the ship's still back there in the background. Have we had enough? Or the boat. We need to be just as tough as the Marines, the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy. So we have to also be held up to that standard as well. Minute 26 probation on the quarter deck. Recruits who don't meet the standards of their company commanders are put on probation, which is signified by wearing a red belt. Are you even using your brain press? You get put on probation um, when you're like falling behind the company, you have like an attitude problem. You wear a red belt that says, I need special attention, I need extra help, I need you. That is not what you want either. See, I we had a guy in our company, and I'm not going to call him out. Uh, well, I will say, uh, Seaman Og. Uh, Og was an awesome dude. It's just sometimes, I don't think he was quite prepared for boot camp. But it was funny because <laughs> you get the attention of the company commanders in the wrong way. And, well, life gets a little bit tougher for you. He uh, slept through one watch uh he actually took and went to a medical on a saturday which is a big no-no whenever he gets back from medical we're just we're in formation getting ready to march to chow and to come to commander uh hainer he's <laughs> seaman hog where have you been recruit sir medical sir and what did they say they said I was exhausted, sir. And what did you do at medical? Oh, I took a nap. Holy dog sh the One of the best dressing downs I've, I saw while I was there. 
freaking hilarious. We had another guy who actually got phased out because he uh, tested positive for crack cocaine before, uh, due to his, uh, you know, his drug test previous to coming in. I don't know how you take and decide to do that, but whatever. Uh, he uh, would not shut up in seamanship class, so he had to take and walk and talk the whole way from seamanship class to the barracks, which is a good quarter mile. It's a good quarter mile march, and then he had to take and walk. He had to talk in formation all the way from the barracks to chow hall, and then while we were in in the chow hall, but after he got done eating, he had to take a walk around the chow hall, talking the whole time, and it went from everything you learned about his family drama, and he finally ran out of stuff to say. It was like the sky is blue and the grass is green. It looks pretty outside today, and every so change the subject. We've already heard that with recruit. Some funny stuff happens while you're in boot camp. There's no two ways about that. You to put the spotlight on me for a couple of days. Bam, bam. Recruits in need of even more motivation enter a program known as RAMP, which stands for Recruit Attitude Motivational Program. Recruits in RAMP are required to wear a red vest. RAMP is a program we have in place for the recruits who don't seem to grasp the basic fundamentals of getting on board and aligning themselves with the Coast Guard Corps values. It gives them a chance to step back, realize the bigger picture, and that it means more than just the individuality in which brought the recruits to the training center. It's how they operate as a team and as a cohesive unit. When we filmed this, these recruits were completely unsupervised and weren't being ordered by their company commanders. Get over here, Wettler! Get over here, Wettler! I don't understand why the hell everyone is counting but you. And then you cross that threshold when I can see you, then you start doing the right thing. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. Chair sit. Chair sit. Feet shoulder width apart right now. Doing the right thing even when no one's looking. That's not fair. He gets a wall. We didn't have, we we couldn't do that. We had to take it. It was squats. There's no wall. We didn't press against the wall. That doesn't make it really any easier, but still, we had to take and stand. We had to squat position with arms out in front or arms like. Ah! Say it, you. Louder. Louder. Shut your mouth. So take it. Tell me exactly why. Why you think it's okay to do whatever the hell you want, and then someone sees you, and then oop, wake up. Time for me to start doing the right thing. She's nice. She 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 seems real nice. Our our company commanders were not as nice. I'll just say that. The, the language and everything else used just wasn't as sweet. Not good to go! Not good to go! Get upright. Fly away from me. In addition to undergoing intense physical and psychological challenges, the recruits actually spend the bulk of their time in the classroom. The Coast Guard basic training is heavy in academics. It's almost, we use the term sometimes that it's like drinking information through a fire hose. Recruits are trained to fight fires. This so-called wet room is used to simulate a fire on a Coast Guard cutter, giving the recruits a realistic firefighting scenario. The recruits are trained in marksmanship, and seamanship. We're gonna practice on our knots right now, so everybody get your lanterns out really quick. While filming in this class, Come up through. one recruit gestured towards our camera. An officer spotted this, and while the recruit was privately reprimanded for the offense, the entire company would have to pay the price. Oh, oh, you idiot. Oh, why would you do that? Like, for, oh my God, like, Somebody's gonna have a locker party one day, or you know, it's, they're gonna have a party one day, one evening after the lights go out and uh, the commander, the company commanders don't keep quite of uh, qu close of a look, and they're going, yeah, socks and locks and. Whew. You people want to act like actual crazy people all day at seamanship? I got a tool for that. Two zero zero seconds. Back online with a full canteen. Go. 
Oh, oh no. Fly, 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 little blue blurs, little blue blurs. Ears. Open. Feet shoulder width apart right now. Open guns. Get your canteens above your skulls. Open guns. Fingers oh, no. interlaced, cap facing the overhead. Open guns. You people have absolutely no self-discipline. Absolutely no self-discipline. So you're just going to remind yourselves, we have no self-discipline. Go. We have no self-discipline. We have no self-discipline. We have no self-discipline. Take your biceps to your ear. Take your biceps to your ear. Scream your face off. Get louder. Get louder. We have no self-discipline. We have no self-discipline. We have no self-discipline. We're not self We're not self Get it up, Lynn! Really? We had it taken. One of us screwed up one go one time, and this is about week six, but it was it was taken and doing semen it was I believe it was actually in seamanship class, but it wasn't it wasn't nothing like that. It was one of the guys just I think it was the same idiot that wouldn't shut up. So, to prove a point, we all got in freaking trouble. Every one of us. And we had to take and fill our canteen water bottles. We had to fill them up in the bathroom or the little water fountains that they had uh, in there. We had to fill them up, screw the top back on, double time it back down all the way back to formation, unscrew the cap, and then drink it until they blew the whistle. And whenever they blew the whistle, we had to let the rest of it run over top of our head. Then as soon as they blew the whistle, we had to take a run all the way back. And we were on the third floor of the barracks. And it's only, it's only three floors. We had to take a run back up to the third floor of the barracks, refill the water bottles, run back down, do the same thing over and over again. It's one of the few times I almost puked while in boot camp. Hey, Lindsay, you taking a nice little break now that I turned my back? Hey, let's add a few minutes for that there, Victor. Thank you, shipmate. Thank you. We have no self-discipline. We might think uh, a small water... We used to have attention on deck remedy remedial uh drills because you'd have a company commander walk into the squad bay and whoever was posted at the door would completely miss the mark and wouldn't say a fucking thing so we'd have to take and go from sitting in the indian style popping up to attention on deck with a <laughs> with a salute and then it was blow the whistle blow the whistle so you they blow the whistle you go from sitting to popping up blow it again sitting and they took and the company commander that did this shut the windows we moved all of the beds back we had a girl have to go to medical because she almost passed out we had three three or four people throw up in the trash can oh it was not fun bottle with water in it isn't that heavy but after 20 minutes your shoulders kind of get a little heavy and uh once the sweat starts lock them bad eyes, boys in you want to definitely put it down but let me advise you, lock you them in. put it down because you will be holding a little different than locking in your knees you're not gonna pass out that way taking a nice little break yelton oh shit taking a nice little break yelton We have no self-discipline. It's immediate recognition for their mess ups. It's immediate recognition for something that they're doing wrong. I let them set their own pace, you know? I'm saying all of you as a team are gonna keep it up. Oop, he didn't make it, let's all start over. So it's really productive. You taking a nice little rest there with your hands, Van Brunt? Crazy how fingers interlaced on the front of the canteen was the rule and you broke it. Start over! Very challenging to get through it.
you just almost laugh at your own pain because you're out of breath from screaming so loud, your shoulders are burning. It's a huge relief when the whistle blows and you get told to put your arms down. You want to make a deal, Victor? Yes, Ears. Open. Ears. Open. Drop the canteens. There was no sweeter relief for them that day, I can almost guarantee you, than taking a drop in that canteen. Because 20 minutes up, even interlock, you're, you're, you're burning right there. Before graduation, recruits receive their orders for where they'll be stationed after they leave Cape May. Davis! Where'd you want to go, Davis? Let us know. You're going all the way across to Hawaii, oh. the exact opposite area. Well, will that work for you, David? Is that good enough? Yes, David! All right, you can't get Puerto Rico, you got Hawaii. That's pretty good, right? Yes, David! Hawaii! Where'd you want to go? Jim Rod, Duke of Bunchum, anywhere warm! Recruits can request the region or district where they'd prefer to be stationed after graduation. I took them, I, I, I got Yeoman Training School. Uh, in writing by the recruiter. So that's where I went was Yeoman uh, Training School there in Petaluma, California. Uh, that was an interesting uh, thing in and of itself. Where do you want to go? Bounce Greenwell, Chuka Parker on any Coast Guard Cutter. Winner, Coast Guard Cutter Shackle, South Portland. But their requests aren't always granted. Where do you want to go? Taylor, Taylor Gonzalez, California! You're, you're going to Alabama! Woo! Alabama! On the Friday of week eight, the recruits are ready for graduation. It's funny, when I was, when I was in boot camp, uh, I didn't take and have to do much with the flag. Once I got out of boot camp and I actually got down to Jacksonville, Florida, which is the second place I was stationed at, I took and did color guard uh, at two Jacksonville Jaguar games, and that was pretty cool. Friends and family gather for their first glimpse of the recruits since the beginning of boot camp. Chris, nice, quick turn. They feel joy and accomplishment. They know that they have done something that is physically and emotionally challenging. They feel satisfied that they've done that. It's funny, I took and met a couple of the, uh, I met the, not the company, but the battalion commander or the, the base commander um, and one of the company commanders after I went to Yeoman A school, they took and flew out there for they flew out there for some kind of training and I was able to take and talk to talk to them and whole hell of a lot cooler than whenever I was in boot camp that's for sure and it's funny because they earlier this is earlier in the video one of the recruits was in trouble because apparently he didn't shave I had to shave every time I went to the bathroom in boot camp I remember whenever we had we had our company inspection by the base commander he asked the company commanders, hey, did you know, this recruit shave because he's got a 5 o'clock shadow. They're like, sir, he, he, he shaved every time he goes to the bathroom. He just keeps a 5 o'clock shadow. So. Their parents are impressed because many times the parents see them for the first time as an adult, as an accomplished adult. We get a lot of credit for the change that goes on here in a lot of cases we're just the catalyst. Recruits respond to the impetus themselves. They formulate the plan to change themselves as individuals and as a team and they meet their company commander's standards. That's the you've actually done it and that's I think what you see in the room today.
Meanwhile, at Sexton Hall, boot camp is just beginning for Whiskey Company. That's the group we first met at the Philadelphia airport. I did the wrong thing. Before the company is officially formed, they're addressed by Captain Owen Gibbons, the commanding officer of Training Center Cape May. I can make you the following three promises. Promise number one, this will be hard. Do not be afraid of that. Change is difficult. But if you give us your all, we will prove to you that you can do more than you ever thought yourself capable of. Yes, sir! Promise number two, I insist that you meet every single standard of this program in order to graduate, but we will assist you to meet those standards. Do you understand? Yes, sir! That assistance will not always be comforting, but it will develop in you the knowledge, skills, and abilities, the attitudes that you will need to leave here and immediately begin performing frontline Coast Guard missions in service to the American public. Do you understand that? Yes, sir! Promise number three, you will be safe. Let me say that again. You will be safe. You will train in an environment that is free from intimidation or discrimination based on your race, creed, color, gender, religion, or orientation. You will not be assaulted and you will not be harassed. Do you understand that? Yes, sir! Okay, you won't be intimidated for any of those reasons right there. That is a God's honest truth. But, uh, you've got to be intimidated because you're a recruit. Simple as that. And depending on your term of assault, some of these people these days, oh, I've assaulted. They would not feel safe here. I can promise you that. You can do this. Every single person in this room is capable of completing this program. And the truth is that we need you to do this. All over our Coast Guard, there are units that are sailing shorthanded. There are empty racks because those units are waiting for you to complete your training and to join them as they serve the American public. But the only question on our mind is, are you ready? Yes, sir! We're just about to find out. Yeah, there's been some changes, that's for sure, since I was in. Uh, it looks like some of them were for the better, some of it. Uh, maybe it's just... <laughs> he had a former Army guy in there as as a drill instructor. He had a former Marine as a drill instructor. And then we had a, a yeoman first class. A yeoman, or, you know, they do the paperwork and stuff, and he was very sadistic. So, Or at least they appeared sadistic. So, you know... Maybe it's just remembering and everything and seeing some of this. Now, I know they're not showing the full breadth of everything, but uh, it'd be cool if they were to take and actually follow one company from start to finish. I think that would be cool. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's just... If I had it all to go and do over again, I would definitely do the Coast Guard again. I might do some things different while I was in the Coast Guard. But I enjoyed my time with the Coast Guard. Uh, it was quite the experience, to say the least. Uh, very awesome people in there. Um, I didn't take and I don't take and normally broadcast it out because I only served for right at two years. So for me, people going, "Oh, I'm a vet! I'm a vet!" You served enough time, you, you know. Just the fact that you served, that's awesome. But I only I didn't serve that long, so it's for me. It's it's like I I don't I get uncomfortable with that. Because I didn't serve for that long. So, it's the reason why, you know, you're not going to hear me other than probably this actually bringing it up. That being said, if you like what you see, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Y'all have a lovely one. Peace out.